Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Happy Monday to you. I hope you're having a good start to your week so far. And we're continuing our look at the Sermon on the Mount, these words of Jesus that speak into his teaching, his uh, teaching on how we should live our life, especially now as we're into chapter six, some of the practical application of our faith. And if you were tuned in Friday, I shared uh, that at the beginning of chapter six, he speaks on some hypocrisy in some areas. We talked about giving and and how we can be people who are generous without being hypocritical. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about prayer and and where there might be some landmines of getting into some hypocritical prayer. Uh, Later on in the week, we'll look at fasting. But I don't know if you've ever been to the place of, of asking, how do I pray? And uh, as a pastor, I've gotten that question quite a bit. And maybe you've received that question just as a follower of Jesus, new believers around you say, how do I pray? What are some ideas? So Jesus speaks into it. And I want to share his words because his words are more important than mine. So let's take a look at Matthew chapter six, starting in verse five. He says this, he says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Now we should stop there and notice a few things. First, he says, when not if you pray. If you uh, look at both the giving, the prayer, and the fasting, he says, when you do this, assuming that we are going to be doing this. He doesn't say, if you decide that this is a good idea. No, he says, when you pray, because the implication is you should be praying. And also he says, don't be like the hypocrites. And that should get our attention. Go, I need to take note here. What do I not need to do? He says, they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they've received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. I want to pause there for a second. Because it's, it's easy to look at this and go, well, hold on, I, I can't pray in public. I can't you know, pray at a meal in front of people or... Are our pastors sinning on stage and they begin to end their sermon in prayer? And, you know, our, our worship pastors, when they pray to end our, our service of worship? No. He's not giving a prohibition about praying in public. Instead, he's challenging what our motivations are. Is your motivation for people to see you praying? They go, oh, wow, they're so holy, they're so pious, they're so religious. They're, oh, I, just, I want faith like that and the boldness to pray in public. Is that your motivation? Or is your motivation to connect with God in prayer? And that's why he encourages you to go to a closet, to go in secret, to go in the dark where you can't be distracted, you can't be seen, where the only motivation is to connect with him in prayer. He says that's how we should do it. He continues. He says, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Don't be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Again, This is a reminder that our prayer should just be a natural expression of our speech. I like to say that prayer should sound conversational, that however you talk is how your prayer should be, unless your talk is a little vulgar, and then you might want to uh, kind of redirect that in a healthier way. But but our prayer should be an expression of who we are, of how we communicate. Uh, It should sound like us. And too often I hear people say, oh, I wish I could just pray like this person. They're so beautiful and eloquent. And go, but you're not that person. You shouldn't sound like that because that's not you. And again, it's a reminder that our, we don't need to heap on these phrases. We don't need to repeat ourselves and, and have all this excessiveness in our prayer. Our prayer should just be an expression of our heart, our desire, our adoration, our worship to God. So Jesus says, we don't want to be like hypocrites. We don't want to pray so that people see us praying and think highly of us. We don't want to uh, write these and come up with these prayers that are eloquent and fancy and verbose just so that we can sound religious and sophisticated and holy. But instead, we just need to be ourselves and to connect with him for the motivation of connecting with him. And Jesus continues and he says, pray then like this. And that's where we're going to stop. And I'm going to encourage you to come back tomorrow as Patrick, our recovery pastor, walks through the framework of the Lord's Prayer as Jesus gives us an example of what our prayer should sound like each and every day. And I think you're going to be blessed by it. So I hope you tune in tomorrow. We'll see you next time.